In this video, we're going to go over some different types of advanced propulsion aerospace craft that have been developed and produced by the U.S. government and secret military programs. I hope to explain a portion of UFO sightings and better help people identify flying objects and know if they are seeing something they should be recording or not. The Office of Naval Research produced several flying platforms and flying jeeps between 1953 and 1959. The Hiller VZ-1 Pawnee was the first in a series of VTOL platforms, including a flying disc style craft known as the VZ-9 Avrocar, which used a single central high-speed turbine to create a pressure gradient along the bottom surface of the craft known as the Quand effect, thus providing lift. Flying platforms and flying jeeps were also developed by NACA, the National Advisory Committee on Aeronautics, a precursor to NASA in the early 1950s. The DH-4 Helivector and DH-5 Aerocycle were both produced in 1955, and the Benson B-10 Propcopter, 1959, the Curtis VZ-7, etc., etc., all, provo all proved to be much too dangerous and unstable for practical military application, and I'm not going to waste much time on these dinosaurs because your chances of seeing them in the near future are slim to none unless you plan on visiting a museum. These aircraft can account for a few, but certainly not all, of past UFO reports. Modern flying platforms have been reported as UFOs caught on film and later positively identified. The UFO in this video is identified as a WASP or X-Jet. The Solo Trek XFV and the PAM 100B are two other known examples of flying platforms in production today, which could maybe account for a small number of UFO sightings. But now let's get to the good stuff. Everything I've mentioned up until now is declassified. That means boring. The government openly admits to it. The rest of this video, although not complete, is a list of man made advanced propulsion, or as those of us in the know like to call them, alien reproduction vehicles. I'm going to go over a few known examples of these and how to differentiate between them and actual alien vehicles, those produced and flown by extraterrestrial entities. The first on our list is the TR-3B Flying Triangle, which is the craft we see in the first ever episode of X-Files. This craft was the first ever prototype Air V to use the superfluid antigravity centrifuge engine. It looks like they built the engine first and then came up with the aircraft design to build around it to make it fly. If you notice, the fluid is rotated inside of a small semispherical container located at the center of the craft. Since the TR-3B uses an accelerator with a small radius, it only succeeds in eliminating 85% of the total weight of the craft. Thus, the rest of the lift is provided by three thrusters at each corner of the triangle, similar to the PV-704's use in the Avrocar propulsion drive, only these run on liquid oxyhydrogen. These serve to stabilize and control the flight of the craft, as well as a portion of the lift. Stabilization and direction is a key design problem with craft that utilize a superfluid, superferrofluid antigravity engine. So note the three stabilizer units mounted on the underside of these other craft. These are most likely some sort of specialized gyroscopes, but they also could be some sort of wave amplifiers, as Bob Lazar suggests. Either way, their function is more or less the same, stabilization and direction. You can tell by the fact that there are three of them. It appears that they also double as tripod landing gear. Brad Sorensen produced this drawing of an ARV, or alien reproduction vehicle. Here are some other photographs of similar craft, which in my opinion are all man-made products of the secret government. Now comes the real question. Did they create this technology themselves, in secret, ahead of the pace of the rest of the world's scientific advancements? Did some Thule society in Germany come up with this from spiritual journeys uh, or, or whatever and give it to the Nazis, uh, I mean, this, this, these tales are ridiculous. Or did they cheat and copy it from something else, maybe something that crashed in Roswell, New Mexico in 1947? I admit that some reports can be reasonably explained by weather phenomena, lenticular clouds, ball lightning, etc., or any number of aerial phenomena, such as man-made flying machines that we went over in the first half of the video. After all, a UFO is just an unidentified flying object. Once it's identified, it's not a UFO anymore, even if it is an alien aircraft. The problem is, we just don't know if these are real alien craft, because we can't identify them. To this day, there is not one single confirmed report of an actual alien or alien craft, even with hundreds of thousands of documented cases on file. 
so many that it's going to take 10 to 15 years for Britain to sort through theirs, which they need to go over and redact any and all personable, personally identifiable information in the reports, which then in turn makes them impossible to confirm. This means that any and all reports of actual alien contact can never and will never be confirmed until the government chooses to confirm them. Plausible deniability and total unaccountability for telling the truth to the American people and the rest of the world. The idea that the world was round would sound crazy to people 400 years ago, just like many of these ideas may sound crazy to mainstream science today. Luckily, in the past few years, the discovery of quasi-crystals and metamaterials have opened up new doors, and mainstream science has finally caught up to the point where these ideas can be presented in a context that coincides with conventional scientific wisdom. Project Blue Book was the official government study on UFOs, which of course concluded that UFOs were explainable and that aliens didn't exist. During the 1950s, Project Blue Book and subsequent covert psychological operations were highly successful in brainwashing the mainstream scientific and academic communities against the idea of ETs, anti-gravity, and anything else having to do with aliens. It is now up to us to bring a paradigm shift in the mainstream scientific consciousness by promoting these new ideas and information and showing people that these possibilities are very real and possible and they no longer need to be afraid to discuss them. At the same time, we need to break down the infrastructure that has been created to keep these secrets from the people, starting with NASA, which is simply a front for a much larger secret space program. Just look at what UK hacker Gary McKinnon found inside building number 8 of the Kennedy Space Center. Which leads us to our next subject, UFOs which cannot be identified and are believed to be the real deal, actual alien craft. The two most commonly cited are rods, long carrier ships, and saucers or flying disks which are sometimes mistaken for rods from a side on view from far away. Real alien craft are extremely lightweight and maneuverable with inertial drive systems that can take 90 degree turns at breakneck speed without having the pilots or crew experience the impulse acceleration. The propulsion system is super engineered and modified to a degree that could never be manufactured or reproduced by human facilities. They simply couldn't grow quasi crystals that large and that pure and that perfect. The drive systems literally create their own inertial reference frame by rotating so quickly that the massive frame dragging or frame skipping effect occurs from relativity in the immediate space-time continuum around the craft. This literally bends space-time around the craft itself rather than propelling the actual craft through space-time. So if you have a UFO sighting that describes something incredibly fast that moved like nothing they'd ever seen before, then there's a good or better to better chance of it being a legit sighting. The fact that aliens would be technologically equipped with metamaterial cloaking or active invisibility camouflage combined with our own human optical limitations severely reduces the chances of you seeing a real alien spacecraft. This is why many UFO photographers and videographers are now switching to filming in the infrared and ultraviolet spectrum. There are people who have captured a bright ball of light that you can see is there in UV and infrared but it's completely invisible to the regular camera and the human eye. This is pretty solid proof that something is definitely there that doesn't want to be seen and is using some rather sophisticated technology to achieve both meta-invisibility and noiseless emissionless powered flight. There's also the chance that you could catch a glimpse of a craft coming out of or going into its meta-invisible state. This can often be confused and misinterpreted by the untrained observer. As the surface of the craft becomes meta-active, there is a brief but extremely intense flash of light, brighter than the daylight sun. Sometimes there is more than one flash, but once it finally engages the surface plasma and oscillation frequency, the craft will basically disappear completely from sight. Now think about this. You're watching this thing go flying by. Suddenly it flashes and then disappears. One could just as easily conclude from this observation that, oh, the craft flashed a really bright light and then warped to hyperspeed and took off faster than I could see. I have even heard people try to claim that the flash of light is like a luminous sonic boom as the craft jumped to light speed. This is a seemingly logical explanation, even though it is wrong. I'm going to leave it at that for now. I hope that you found this video informative and helpful, at least. A lot of times in this field we start out looking for answers, but only seem to find more questions. So thanks for watching. Don't forget to rate five stars and subscribe to my channel. Keep watching the skies. The truth's out there. More is coming soon.